I'm pretty excited because we have a new segment called Eye on NPI. My eye on the NPI. That's right. And NPI stands for New Product Introduction. New and product. here it is. Okay. Adafruit's New Product Introduction. And uh, I'll just tell you quickly how this works. We're going to pick a new product out there, probably not from Adafruit, but we're going to tell you about it. It's probably going to be a component, and it's probably going to be something really cool. So to kick it off... NPI. Okay. This, this one's from Espressive. Espressive, the little happy guy. All right, so uh, first off, what's Espressive? What are they known for? Okay, Espressive is a uh, company in Asia, and they make uh, microcontrollers that have built-in wireless technology to them. So they're okay. best known for making the ESP8266 and ESP32 uh, 10 silica plus Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth chipsets that people have been using lately with Arduino and CircuitPython and MicroPython and Lua and whatnot yeah. to make cool IoT projects. Lots of these are in like the smart light bulbs, all sorts of things. Yes, like they're very popular. I mean, there's, I didn't even say they sell like hundreds of millions of these chips. Okay. They're inexpensive, but they're very reliable. And so they're used in a lot of industry products because you get the microcontroller plus Wi Fi all in one. All right, so this is all about MPI. So everyone is talking about this upcoming next product in that line called the ESP32 S2 and as you can see this is some chips that just came out the line so we had some beta chips but they're actually getting released into mass manufacture which is what makes this an NPI not a coming soon. Yeah so this NPI the ESP32 S2 um, is known for a couple things. One um, security. Yeah. So there are a couple um, sec security issues with previous versions of the ESP32. Some people really attacked the ESP32 found some ways that you can maybe extract some keys with some glitching attacks uh, and that has been patched up in the ESP32 S2 so they're definitely they did a big focus on security and um, really hardened all the attack surfaces we have yeah. an IOT video on attack surface um, mitigation yep. check that out if you want to know how to do that um, but so this chip should be good for industry where you want to make sure that there's secret key secret firmware you know so SSID or whatever uh, private keys that they don't get leaked out okay. from the chip what else about this chip is interesting to you, Lady Ada, engineer, who, uh, so what y'all don't know is every single night, Lady Ada uh, just reads NPI data sheets for chips around the world, constantly, always, forever. Um, so this, though, we got, a, we got a hold of some of the things about it. Okay. What things do you like about this? Um, so the USB 32 S2, one of the things that I personally like um, is that USB on the go. So it's all the way okay. on that side um, under the pulse counter. Okay. So the USB on the go is very exciting because as a native USB, this was one of the few things that made it a little bit difficult to update the firmware or do um, some kind of interactions with it because it couldn't show up as a mass storage device okay. or a MIDI device or whatever. Now it has native USB, so it really makes um, interactivity with hardware a lot easier. Uh, and again, it's built in. So like great for price, great for build materials, cost reduction, and of course, space reduction. Um, second, uh, there is, again, that built-in Wi-Fi. There's now a sort of a time of flight thing where you can do, um, if you have, I guess, two of these, you can tell the distance between the two of them uh, using time of flight. More details are coming out. It still has a ton of great peripherals, the SPI, ITOS, I2C, Touch, DAC, ADC. So it's very ESP32-like. One thing that did get removed is it doesn't have uh, Bluetooth or Bluetooth Low Energy. I know some people like that in the ESP32. This, the ESP32 S2, at least to start, does not come with Bluetooth. It's just Wi-Fi. And that 10 silica LX7 microcontroller, I think it's got like a couple hundred K of RAM. And I think there's also a um, RISC-V coprocessor in there. Again, more details are going to come out Okay. Soon. And because it has USB in it, we've already got it started on some work, but there's a couple things that we can say for sure we're going to do with this. Yes, TVUSB supports it. And in fact, Espresso um, is really excited to help us support uh, the SP32 with the Teeny USB. Um, Teeny USB is a completely open, MIT licensed USB software stack with host and device, and it's not tied to any vendor. So you can use the stack with any chipset, which is really important. A lot of stacks are tied to a vendor. You can't use it unless you're using ST parts or microchip parts, and that's great if you're using those parts. But um, Espressif, you know, when they started working on the ESP32, we said, hey, let's add support to this Teeny USB. You get all these USB um, peripherals basically for free once you do the low level stuff. Um, they were able to do it. I think there's a pull request coming in. They're doing some testing. Um, so people who want to use um, the USB with IDF know that Teeny USB has support. And that means you get you know, mass storage, CDC, MIDI, 
R and DNS, I think somebody just put in. So a lot of USB support is going to come right out of the box. Okay. So if you go to digikey.com, you can search for ESP32. However, if you want to see this specific component that we were talking about, including pricing, here's how to get it. And it's about a dollar, which yeah. is amazing. So the raw chip, uh, again, you know, we, we don't really sell chips. We, we tend to sell uh, modules or breakout boards or feathers. Uh, so if you want to pick up these, um, sign up. Uh, you can uh, pre-order them from DigiKey, and they'll get them to you in the moment that they show up in a couple weeks or so, uh, you know, unless something goes amiss, hopefully not. Um, if they're able to get that stock, they'll send you out some cut tape. Uh, I have some on order. I'm very excited. Uh, there's also modules and dev boards of a wide variety in different packaging. Uh, check out the product ordering information to know whether you want the dev kit, the module, the module with PS RAM, or just the raw chip. Okay, as now shown that, here. that DigiKey um, product ID. Yeah. What do those numbers and letters mean? Well, I don't work for DigiKey, but this is what I'm guessing. I think the first number is the supplier code. Okay. So each supplier has like a number, and I think okay. ESP Espresso is the 1965th, not 1965, which is a great year, yeah. but just the, the okay. number. Then the other one then is the obvious, part number, yeah. ESP and then what's the two. other things? CT means cut tape, okay. so it means uh, I like to order when I get prototypes, I get them in cut tape, but you can also get them in digi reels, or of course, you want to splurge, get a full reel of 2,000 components, that would be a TR okay. for tape and reel, and then ND, I think, just stands for like new DigiKey, I think it's the new DigiKey okay. code. All right, so that is I on NPI. We took you there, we brought you back. <laughs>